Welcome to the Advanced Statistical Research Methods course or the advanced course like I like to call it. This course is a continuation from my basic course or statistical research methods which many of you have already taken. On this video I will briefly go through what this course is about, what kind of topics we address on this course and so on. Other videos in the introductory set will explain the practicalities or how you work through the course and what kind of tools we use, how you're graded, what kind of credits you get and so on. Let's get to business. So what is this course about? What will you learn? On the basic course my idea was to teach you basics of research design and teach you how to use regression analysis and factor analysis and some other very basic tools and understand them on a more fundamental level uh, so that you can apply them in an informed way instead of simply following this kind of cookbook or recipe approach. On this course we will expand from that a lot. So we will uh, go through some of the more advanced analysis. So we will do structural ecosystem modeling, multi-level modeling, missing data and so on. And we will try to understand these techniques or a more fundamental level going beyond these kind of like uh, procedures and checklists and uh, best practices and really understand what these techniques are about, what are the assumptions they're based on, what are the principles they're based on and how they should be used in an informed way instead of simply following what others have been doing. After this course you should be able to carry out these analyses efficiently, effectively and reproducibly using, S, using R or Stata. I don't support SPSS for, for two reasons. While you could do some of these analyses with SPSS, most of the things that we do on this course are simply not possible with that software. Also, I have no idea how to do, for example, multi-level multi -level model with SPSS. So be warned, this is about advanced stuff using R or SPS or Stata and these are the software that you should be using. You can also do, do uh, some of the work with M plus and if any of the students want to do that, I can provide instruction on that. Another important thing beyond effectively, efficiently and uh, is the reproducibility of the analysis. It is very important and this has been highlighted in many many different uh, articles recently that we are able to reproduce the analysis that we present in an article. So you should always document every single step from the raw data to the final table in an article. The ideal way of accomplishing that is through automation. So we will learn how to construct your Stata do file or R file in a way that it starts by loading the data set and then exports all tables and then we can just copy paste or link the table to Word document so there is no manual work involved. This automation guarantees that your results will be reproducible in a way that you can always show the exact steps that you took from the raw data to the final output. This is, this is really important. We'll go through why later on the course. Then we'll go through reporting. In contrast to the basic course where you did one to three data analysis assignments and, and wrote reports, on, on this course we will focus on, on different kinds of interpretations of, of analysis techniques and how to do, for example, graphical displays of results. So the idea here is that we try to make our results understandable also to people who don't know the method that we are applying. Because if we are realistic, if we use, for example, a Arlano bond estimator for dynamic panel models, not many researchers understand what that is about. Finally, you should be able to review articles using basics, basic and applied techniques and you should be able to uh, read and produce methodological evidence. This final point is important because your career as a professional researcher does not stop on this course and you'll probably have to learn some techniques that go beyond this course. For example, uh, there might be specialized techniques that are applicable to certain niches that I don't cover on the course or there might be new techniques that come out after you have taken this course. You need to understand what is the evidence behind those techniques 
and be able to read that evidence. Because not all techniques and not all particularly guidelines type articles are evidence-based. They might be based simply on, on observing what researchers do and then presenting that as, as best practice. But as we will find on this course and as you've seen perhaps on the basic course, not everything that researchers do is justified. People make mistakes and sometimes a mistake is institutionalized as the best practice. We need to understand evidence to be uh, able to avoid that problem. The best way to understand evidence is to be able to produce evidence yourself. And for this reason, we'll do simulations on the course. We start by simple simulations, just simulate one sample, run regression analysis, see that we get the correct result from uh, a large sample size. We also do Monte Carlo simulations, which extend that simple case by simulating multiple samples. And we will see that regression analysis, for example, produces the correct result on average from small samples. It's unbiased. We will learn these kind of things and this is the reason why we do simulations on the course. Personally, I do simulations all the time, not only for methodological research, but also if I want to understand how a technique works. I simulate a sample and then I try the technique on that sample. If I get the correct result, then I can be more confident that I'm using the technique correctly. Now let's go through the, the schedule and the content. The course runs for full academic year starting from September and ending in May. We have 10 units. The first unit like in the basic course is the introduction and, and the purpose of the introduction is just to get, get to know each other, uh, familiarize you with what this course is about, how do we work on the course and you will also do a pre-exam which covers uh, some books. I'll explain that in another, another video. Then uh, we will have eight normal units, units two to nine, that address different analysis techniques. We'll start with more research design related things, more fundamental foundational things like causality and structural ecosystem modeling, which is a special uh, a generalization of many of the techniques that we work on on the course. And then we go through more advanced course, uh, building up to multi-level models, which forms the foundation for longitudinal data analysis and so on. Then at the end of the course, we will have um, student presentations and course conclusions. Every student on this course makes two presentations. Your, you present the results of one Monte Carlo simulation that you did on your own, of course with the, with the help of, of other students and myself. And then you will also get to pick a methodological article that we have not covered on the course and then present that article to others. The purpose here is to uh, teach you how to evaluate evidence again. And the best way is to produce and present evidence. Then you really need start to understand what the evidence is, is about and how it should be interpreted. Finally, we have a final exam where you get to uh, put your skills to the test. And I can guarantee that that is going to be pretty challenging. You don't have to get it all correctly to get a five, but if you get it all correctly, you are probably in at least top 1% of quantitative researchers in the world. So welcome to the course and in the following videos I will explain the practicalities in more detail.